it's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and if you've never heard of NeoFetch you should have because you've probably seen me use it you've probably seen other youtubers use it who are running Linux systems anyways it's just the system that comes up and says here's what your system is and here's all the things that are running on it and it gives it to you in kind of an ASCII format so we can go look at NeoFetch here so NeoFetch kind of looked like this one, FastFetch, looks like it's going to be a pretty great replacement, but I did want to offer you guys some great open source replacements for NeoFetch. NeoFetch is going to discontinue development. I don't really know why. There's an article here about it. I'll link to it in the show notes in the description. But there's a few options that I wanted to give you guys out there and kind of show you what it can do. So right now I'm running Ubuntu 2404 desktop here, so we'll kind of go check these out. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really truly enjoy it and I just can't say thank you enough. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel, plus you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like, just click on that thumbs up and that way YouTube knows that you like it and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. Well, we've got FastFetch, and it says that it can be just installed from the repositories. So we're just going to go uh, grab this PPA here, or there's a deb if you want to go grab that. So if we click uh, the GitHub releases page, open that up. If you'll scroll down, there's usually an assets section. Um, sometimes you have to expand it. Sometimes it's already expanded. It just depends on the system that you're looking at. But if we just kind of scroll through here, here's a deb. Now this is AMD64. This is the one that I would want to get. So it's going to download that deb. Uh, the other way is to go and add that PPA that we saw. So you can also add a PPA to your system to get it to install from there as well. Uh, the PPA is nice just because it'll get updated uh, regularly. The deb, I I'm not sure that it'll automatically get updated. I, I think it might. So what we'll do is go to downloads because we downloaded that deb and here it is somewhere right here here's our fast fetch deb so we're just going to do sudo apt install and we're going to do dot slash fast fetch and we're just tab to complete now this should try to go out and get all the dependencies that it needs it always gives you this little warning at the end just to let you know like hey this isn't really here uh, we're just going to do fast fetch and as you can see, now I'll make the font a little smaller so it fits on the screen. We get the information, it was very quick, so uh, it, it just gives us this Ubuntu. Who's here? We're running Ubuntu 2404, x86-64. It's running on an AE7, that is the machine that I'm using. Uh, we've got the Linux kernel 6.8. It's been up for one day, one hour, 56 minutes. Uh, a lot of different information here. We've got the shell as bash, the display. We've got LG Electronics, it says 22 inch. I I thought this was a 27 inch, but I don't know. Uh, GNOME 46, so it really does grab a lot of information. Um, it's got Matter with Wayland or Mutter with Wayland for the, the Windows Manager. Uh, Yaru Blue Dark is the theme, so we've got a lot of information there. Um, if we keep going down, we've got GNOME Terminal that we're running in. Uh, the AMD Ryzen 9, and it's a 7945 with Radeon 78, uh, 780M graphics, so that's pretty great that it pulls that. It gets our GPU, AMD Phoenix, uh, 80 gigahertz integrated, nice, okay. Memory, 6 gigs out of 32 gigs, basically, that it's the system is using. We've got swap, 0 out of 8 gigs of swap available, our disk information, so you really get a ton of information. Here's my local IP address. And then we get a little bit of more information there. So uh, really a nice, nice, nice little system. Um, I'm sorry about the purple background. So I'm actually going to change that. And we'll just run this one again just so you can see it a little bit better. So give me just a second here. All right. Let's just do that again. So we'll just do fast fetch. We've got that installed. There we go. That's a lot easier to see in my opinion. Now you guys may hate it, but I think it's much easier to see the red text on, on the black background there. Some people have a color blindness that does make that more difficult, so I apologize if it is making it difficult for you, but that lets you know that you may not want to use the black background. Uh, yeah, so we've got all that information. Really cool. I like Fast Fetch. It's pretty nice. That's probably the one that I'll keep, but I haven't tried the other two yet, so let's go see what they say. All right, so the next one we've got here, you can see I was reading about these things. So we've got Screen Fetch, and again, it's got the installation instructions. Um, so you can do from your distribution, so from specific packages. Um, You've got Arch Linux, so you can just scroll down. These are in alphabetical order. So if you're a Fedora user, uh, there's Fedora, FreeBSD, Crux Linux. So tons of all the different Linux 
versions you can get. But then here's Ubuntu and Debian. And again, they've got a PPA that didn't go so great for us last time. Should we try it this time? Um, install from the official repositories or the PPA. Let's use the official repository. So we'll just do this one. We got to put sudo in front of it. Uh, we'll just copy this guy. And we'll go here. We'll do sudo and just middle click. There we go. It does have it in the repositories. Let's let that guy install. That was pretty fast. And this one's called screen fetch. Let's see how it does. Okay, not not quite as much information as you get from fast fetch, and it felt like it took a little bit longer for it to do that one to me. Uh, but it does tell you here's the name of the machine, here's the system I'm running, here's the, the information about the kernel, uptime packages, shell resolution. So I don't think this is correct. It might be because I've got it scaled a little bit, so maybe that's right. Uh, mutter, yeah, so you don't get quite as much detail, but you do get a little bit of information here, which is pretty nice. It's pretty pretty uh, low-key, pretty standard information, but uh, definitely fast fetch gives you more if you just want to see it again. You can see just as I scroll, that one's a little bit smaller. This one's a little bit longer. It's got a little bit more detail going on there for fast fetch, so not bad, though. Screen fetch is pretty great and pretty easy to install, so I like that, too. Let's go check out our third option over here. Um, this one's called CPU Fetch, and they've got some different things here. Now, they don't really have like what I was thinking of as far as DEBs. So they've got an ARM64 version and an x86-64 version, and most of these do have ARM versions as well. So if you're running ARM stuff, you can check that out. But I'm going to click on the x86 version and download it. It downloaded pretty fast. Uh, and then I'll go in my little window here and let's go find cpu fetch let's see what this one does let's go to properties let's allow it to be executed as a program and then let's try this guy again nothing opened okay so let's go in the terminal then so once you install that we'll clear this out and i'm going to make this font a little bigger again just so you can see what i'm doing it's in the downloads folder i believe uh, CPU fetch is right here. So we're just going to do dot slash CPU and we're going to tab. Okay, you do get a little bit of information that way. Now this is a little bit different. Again, not as much detail as you get from fast fetch, but you can see instead of the logo for the actual OS, which is Ubuntu, it gives me the, the AMD in, uh, chip set. So if you've got Intel, I'm going to guess it's going to show you Intel. And if you've got something else, I guess it'll show you that. Uh, and then it gives us the name AMD Ryzen 9. It's a Zen 4 architecture, uh, 4 nanometer architecture, 5.263 gigahertz, 8 cores, which is 16 threads, which is pretty nice. Um, I don't know what AVX is for. So a lot of this is very, very technical detail that I'm not really sure that I would need or use, but uh, CPU fetch, that's pretty interesting. So it pulls the CPU information, it is not pulling system information. So a little bit different from, from NeoFetch, uh, but three really, really great tools right there that you could put to use and, and really kind of grab that information fast. I can't tell you how many times I've gone to different sites that say, hey, you need to have this, or hey, if you have this type of graphics card, or hey, you might want this if you're gonna run this thing. And especially for gaming, a lot of times you wanna know that kind of information. And maybe if you're a gamer, you know exactly what graphics card you have because you built your system. But if you're using an off-the-shelf system and you're wondering, do I have a graphics card that matches that? Um, these types of tools are, are actually really great for finding out that kind of information pretty quickly. So uh, we can do fast fetch again, and then there's our graphics information. And these all have flags too, so, so it's not just going out and just running these things just like I am. Um, there's plenty of flags that you can use to, to run these as well. Um, so fast fetch is here. If we go down a little bit further, you get the usage information here. You could do uh, fast fetch dash C and then tell it, you know, all supported modules and, and find what you, you know, uh, what you're interested in. Um, find all the data that fast fetch detects. So again, you can use dash S, the module format uh, JSON. So again, you can kind of get a lot of information out of these things. Of course, you can use the help uh, tag. So if we go back here, we can do uh, fast fetch dash dash help. And you can see there's a lot of stuff that we could do. Um, so we're just going to go, and look, this is long, so there's a ton of information in the help here. Um, but yeah, dash V will tell you the version, the version raw. You can get so many different things here. List the configuration paths, list data paths, list logos, list modules, list everything that's here. Uh, pretty cool. 
um, C, you can do some configs, uh, things like that. So you can configure a few things with your different options. You've got general options for threads, escape, feedback, um, WMI timeout, processing timeout. Like if it's taking too long to pull the information back, you might want to put that kind of, you know, that kind of thing on there. Um, logo options. So again, you can say the logo type, logo width, logo height. So you can change those aspect ratios on those logos. I mean, just tons, tons and tons and tons of information that you can get here. Um, pretty, pretty nice. If you guys enjoy these things, definitely get out there on their GitHub pages. Give those projects a star so it lets them know that you like it. You know, go in and say thank you. Go into their discussion boards and say, hey, thanks for this. I love it. It's great. You don't even have to be putting in a, an issue. You know, make sure to use the discussion boards if they have them. And then make sure to also say, hey, I really appreciate that you're making this and, and ask if there's anything you can do to help out. Always contribute back if you like open source. That's the way that it grows and the way that it keeps going. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along in the open source journey with us. And I'll talk to you next time.